this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I want to continue now my series on the Holy Spirit by talking to you about the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I want to give you three keys to clearly hearing His voice. You are going to begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with confidence and clarity. We're going to get into that right now. But first, Stephen Moctezum is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're going to get into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the water. Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire Oh there's another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire Oh, Let me start by saying that when I tell you that I'm going to give you three biblical keys to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's important that you understand that I'm not giving you a man-made formula. I'm pulling truths from the scripture. Now, no one can know the voice of the Holy Spirit except by the Holy Spirit. So I can't just necessarily teach you how to hear the voice of God. But these three keys that I'm giving to you are based on biblical truths, they are biblical realities, and these three keys will position you to be one who can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit for yourself. We must come to the place where we no longer accept the lie of the enemy. And the lie of the enemy is this, the voice of God is difficult to hear. It's almost become the norm. Christians in general just accept this idea, this notion, that the voice of the Holy Spirit is difficult to hear. And they live a life struggling to hear God, never confident that he, he is speaking to them, never really clear about the direction for their lives. And we want to avoid this at all costs because if you look in the Bible, the way the believers moved, though they made mistakes, though they had their downfalls, though they had days where they disobeyed God, they knew the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so as we move through these truths, I want you to begin to let your faith be stirred. And I want you to reject that idea, reject that notion that the voice of the Holy Spirit is difficult to hear. Now, it's important that you learn the voice of God because really there's a lot of noise out there. Just check social media, a lot of chatter. The devil speaks, demons speak, politicians speak, Hollywood speaks, the music industry speaks. Um, I can go on, your emotions speak, your family speaks, your friends speak, your situation speaks. There are many different messages, many different ideas coming at you from all sorts of different directions. And we must, as believers, rise above the noise lest we fall into the traps of not hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And here are some of the traps. Number one, Spiritual deafness. This is something that we saw with Samson in Judges chapter 16, verse 20. The Bible says, Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. 
When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. Now, we know, of course, the Holy Spirit does not leave the believer. That's John chapter 14, verse 16. But here the scripture is telling of a consequence. Really, it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was no longer active in him. I believe that God was still with him in the sense that he's omnipresent. God was still aware of his situation. But that active power on his life was diminished. Why? Because he did not heed the word of God. He did not heed the voice of God. He continued down the path of temptation, never once stopping. And incrementally, he gave up his strength. Why? Because he never listened to the voice that was speaking to him very clearly. He saw the Philistines come in to try to capture him several times. And I'm sure that the Holy Spirit tried to speak to him about that situation. But never once did he pause. Instead, he remained plagued by spiritual deafness. Number two, his voice will help us to avoid the sin of presumption. Now, I don't believe that Christians should live a paranoid lifestyle, constantly wondering if they're stepping ahead of God. In fact, many Christians use the voice of God as an excuse to do nothing for him. They're waiting for the heavens to open, for God to speak something very clearly and audibly even before they go out and do any ministry. And this is not really the way God intended for us to do ministry. In fact, Paul the Apostle, when he was on his way to Asia, he didn't even pray about whether or not God wanted him to go to Asia. You know how I know he didn't pray about God's will concerning Asia? I know he didn't pray about Asia because while he was on his way there, the Holy Spirit stopped him. Now, why would the Holy Spirit stop him? Because it wasn't his will. So Paul obviously never prayed about it. Paul obviously never said, Lord, do you want me to go to Asia? He just went because that's where the gospel was needed. And the Lord stopped him because it wasn't his will. So you can trust that the voice of God will guide you as you go. Here's where danger comes in. Danger comes in when you are so confident in your own ability that you forget to stop and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So you're not going to get to heaven and find that God is going to send you to hell, or you're not going to go stand before God, I should say, and find that God is going to send you to hell because, oh, I never called you to preach to those people. I never told you to share the gospel with that individual. No, these are things that God expects us to do based upon what his word says. Don't wait to hear in the spirit what God has already commanded you to do in his word, which is go. So, I'm not talking about paranoia. I'm talking about presumption. This stubborn this stubborn motion forward that you just continue down that path, regardless of any of the signs that God is giving to you. This is the sin of presumption. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, the Bible says, When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Verse 3, Nathan replied to the king, Go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the Lord said to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. Are you the one to build a house for me to live in? So Nathan had to go and correct the word that he had given to David. And in fact, God did not want David to build this. And so Nathan had given David the okay before consulting with the Lord. He, he didn't give the correct word of the Lord to David. And so he presumed that God would be okay with it. And therefore, David almost went ahead with plans that God did not approve of. And so this is an example of the sin of presumption. Knowing his voice will also help you avoid the trap of tradition. We see in Exodus chapter 17, verses 4 through 6, that Moses was told to strike a rock and water gushed out of it. Now that's a powerful miracle in and of itself. But then Moses finds himself in a similar situation in Numbers chapter 20. And this is in verses 7 through 12. And Moses is told to speak to the rock. And instead of obeying the voice of God, instead of obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit and speaking to the rock, Moses once again strikes the rock. Now, many commentators have weighed in with their opinions, and there are a lot of good ways to see this. But one of the things that stands out to me is the fact that I think that Moses was likely striking the rock because that's what he had done before. In other words, 
He was following tradition, not the voice of the Holy Spirit. So if we don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit, we get trapped in tradition, we get trapped in doing things the way we had done them before, thinking that God is still in that method or in that way when he's actually moved on to something else. So power is not found in a system, it's found in obedience. So we need to hear his voice. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, you'll see the call of Samuel and God begins to call to him, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel hears the voice of God, but instead of responding to God, Samuel goes to his mentor, Eli. He says, did you call me? Eli says, no. This happens a couple more times to finally, Eli realizes, hey, this is God speaking to you. Samuel finally says, speak, Lord, your servant hears. So what does this mean? This shows us that it's possible to hear the voice of God without recognizing the voice of God. Now, let me show you something. John chapter 10, verse 27. Watch this. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The question is not, can I hear the voice of God? The question is, are you his sheep? No, I'm not trying to scare you, and no, I don't want to raise doubt, because the reality is this, and this is probably one of the most radical truths I can tell you concerning the voice of the Holy Spirit. Concerning the voice of the Holy Spirit, here is that radical truth. You are already hearing the Holy Spirit right now. Yes, right as, right as you are hearing me speak these words, you are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. No, I'm not saying I'm the voice of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying that God is speaking to you about something in your spirit. He's talking to you. Like Samuel, you are hearing him, but not recognizing him. There is a thought in you. There is, there is something being spoken to you that deep within you know is the voice of the Holy Spirit, but maybe you're struggling with it. Now, before you go and act on any of those things that you are imagining right now, we have to decipher a few things. Again, remember, it's not about hearing Him, it's about recognizing Him. And there are other voices that speak to you. Categorically speaking, there are really only three voices that will ever speak to you. Every bit of information, every idea, every attitude, Everything that you will ever hear or receive mentally will fall under one of these three categories. Number one, the satanic. Number two, the secular. Number three, the spirit. The spirit aligns with both the word and the nature of God. The satanic contradicts the word. It's very easy to spot if you're in the Bible. However, the secular is much more subtle. It violates the nature of God, and therefore you have to know the nature of God to see when something is secular and of the flesh, because oftentimes the flesh can disguise itself as spirit. We have to be very careful of this. Now, people complicate this, but it's really very simple. Again, it's not a matter of hearing him, but recognizing him. If I were to say, I want you to describe the voice of your loved one to me, and you tried to describe the voice of your loved one, how would you say? How would you describe it? How would you say they sound? You would say, oh, well, my, my mother has a high-pitched voice, or my father has a deep voice, or my, my uncle has a nasally voice. You would do your best to describe their voices to me. But even if you describe their voices to me, and I listen to your description, it would do me no good if I were to try to pick out their voice in a crowd of 100 people if I had never heard their voice before. In the same way, people ask me, what does the voice of God sound like? Well, you know it by the Spirit. Well, what does it sound like? You know it by the Spirit. And look, I know that's not the answer you want to hear, but this is just the truth. You know Him by the Spirit. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. So could you describe the voice of your loved one to me? Sure. But would your description of their voice be adequate for me to be able to point them out of a crowd without ever having heard them before? And the answer is no. It's just not possible to describe it that in that manner, in, in such a detailed way. In the same way, I can't describe the voice of God to you in a way that you'll be able to hear Him if you are not a believer and if you don't have the Holy Spirit. So again, this is very important that you understand. It's by the Holy Spirit that you understand, that you know, and that you become familiar with His voice. You would know your loved one the moment they called you and you heard their voice on the other line, you go, oh, that's so-and-so, because you've heard them so many times before. How would you describe sight to a man born blind? How would you describe hearing to a man born deaf? 
In the same way, when someone is not familiar with the voice of God, it's very difficult for me to describe it to them. But here are the three keys that you can apply in your life that will help you to silence the other voices, the satanic and the secular. And once those voices are silent, the only voice that will be left is the voice of the Holy Spirit. So if you're a believer and you silence the secular and you silence the satanic, guess what? All that's going to be left is the voice of the Holy Spirit. And again, this is why I say that I can't teach you in a formula, but I can teach you to be positioned to hear the voice of God. This will not work for you if you don't have the Holy Spirit. This will not work for you if you are not a believer. Now, don't freak out if you try what I'm giving you and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm not hearing God. I must not be a believer. Again, we're not living in paranoia. This is something that you have to learn. It takes time. And this is, this is, this is very key. It takes time in the presence of God. You can't just like that. But if you, if you apply these keys, you'll begin hearing the voice of God with confidence and clarity today if you are a believer who is spending time with the Lord. Okay, so number one, the first key, here we go. Silence and stillness. Silence is the putting away of outer distraction. It's turning off my phone. It's shutting the door. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father, who sees everything, will reward you. That's that shutting away. That's that putting away of all of the physical distractions. That's silence. That's the easy part. That's ta that takes discipline. Then there's stillness. Silence is the putting away of outer distraction. Stillness is the quieting of the soul, the quieting of the emotions, the quieting of the mind, the quieting of the doubt, of the guilt, of the cynicism, of the bitterness, of the unforgiveness, of all of the things that assault our mind. That is the hard part, is silencing that inner chaos. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Be still and know that I am God. Stillness precedes revelation. So much is going on in our minds. Do you ever hear God in hindsight? In other words, you move throughout your day, you get to the end of the day, and you look back at a moment, you think, oh my goodness, I think that was the Lord speaking to me. That's because we're so busy. Everything is so fast-paced that we never take the time to hear His voice. So when I pray, I put away things. I shut the door. I create an atmosphere. Yes, that is a part of what you are to do. I believe in unceasing prayer, which is day-to-day, moment-to-moment. And then there's this type of prayer, the, 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 the silent and still prayer, the shutting yourself away, the Matthew 6, 6 prayer, where you create that atmosphere. That is a form of prayer too, and both are necessary. So when you shut yourself in, when I shut myself in, I just put my word in front of me, I play soft worship music, I close everything down, I tell everybody I'm not to be disturbed, and then I just begin seeking the face of the Lord. But silence and stillness are key. So that's key number one, silence and stillness. Put away the outer distraction and quiet the soul. How do you quiet the soul? I'll tell you, you read the word and you worship. That's how you quiet the soul. Those are the two very practical keys. Which key number two, the word. The word is the key to hearing his voice. The word will familiarize you with his voice. The word will position you to hear his voice. The word will give you confidence when you're hearing his voice. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and, watch this, remind you of everything I have told you. In other words, he reminds and he reveals. He reminds me of the word that I've heard from him, the words of Jesus found in Scripture, and he reveals truth to me. So he reminds me of the word and he reveals, the Holy Spirit reveals everyday things that we need to hear. I can't find in chapter and verse what job I'm supposed to take. I can't find in chapter and verse what school I'm supposed to go to. I can't find in chapter and verse where I'm supposed to live. And while I believe that God allows for our free will to be exercised within the confines of His will, we have to recognize that there are some limitations to what God will have us do. There are moments where God will say, definitely don't move there, but for the most part, you have freedom. So God is not inhibiting us. We're not living under this paranoia, as I said. But as we move, He must guide us. As we move, we must be aware of his voice so that we don't step into any traps. But don't be afraid to move because he will guide you as you move. So the word of God will familiarize you with his voice 
again, it's like that voice in the crowd. If you, when you spend time with a loved one and you hear them again and again, and then you hear them on their phone, you go, oh, that's so-and-so. The same thing happens with the voice of God. You begin to read the Word, and as you read the Word, you become familiar with the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then when you hear Him by the Spirit, you go, that sounds like the Lord. Keep in mind, by the way, I know this is cliche. I know this is very basic, what I'm about to say, but it's so, 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 so important because we say it, but then I don't think we actually realize it. The voice of the Holy Spirit will never contradict the Word of God. It will never happen. So you have to know the Word as your safety net so you don't go out of bounds. So number one, silence and stillness. Number two, the Word. Number three, this one's really going to challenge you. It's obedience. Psalm chapter 37, verse 23 says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Wow. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The Lord directs the steps of who? The godly, the obedient. Now, I'm not saying that God leaves us to do things on our own. And that if we aren't living up to his standards, that he never comes to help us. No, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He works alongside of us in these things. But what I am saying is that a life of disobedience will make it very difficult to hear the voice of God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct thy paths. At least pause to acknowledge him. And acknowledging him is obeying him. That's part of acknowledging him. To disobey is to ignore him. To not acknowledge what he said. Acknowledgement is pausing to hear him and acknowledge him. So if you will acknowledge him, if you will obey him, he will continue to add to what he's saying to you. Look, if you will obey what you know the word of God says, then God will add to your faithfulness. So I read in the word, don't be drunk. I read in the word, don't fornicate. I read in the word, don't commit adultery. I read in the word, don't lie, don't steal. Okay, I don't do those things. Obey the word. Then you read in the word, evangelize, live holy, worship, pray. Okay, I'm going to start obeying that. So if you obey his word on what you shouldn't do and what you should do, and God sees this, now he can trust you. Now, now he can speak to you. So I've obeyed what is written in the word, and now God begins to direct me. Now, here's what's interesting is people say, oh, I want the Lord to speak to me. If you really wanted God to speak to you, you would be in the Word every day until you heard His voice. You would be in the, the Word of God just reading chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter until you heard Him. Why? Because the Word of God is, the, the Bible is, is the Word of God. The written Word is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. Why is God going to speak to you about the next step if you haven't taken the first step? Why is God going to speak to you in the spirit realm if you haven't allowed him to speak to you in the natural realm? If he can't trust you with the written word, how is he supposed to trust you with the rhema word? These are things we must do. We must obey him. And here's the thing about the Lord is God will speak and then not speak again until you've obeyed what he's already spoken to you. That's why some people don't want to pray. That's why some people don't want to get in the word because they already know what he's telling them and they don't want to obey him. But if you will obey him, the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit will become crystal clear. So number one, silence and stillness. Silence the other voices, the secular and the satanic. You do that through silence and stillness. And how do you find stillness of the soul? Again, it's worship in the word. Number two, the word. The word familiarizes you with this voice. Number three, obedience. I obey the word, and when I obey the written word, he can trust me with the rhema word. And that is it for the lesson. I want to pray with you now, and I want to pray that God would give you this new, how should I put it? I want, I want to pray that he lights a fire in you, that that fire would burn so intensely in you that you would stop at nothing until you're hearing the voice of God, that you would seek his face, that you would devote yourself to prayer and the word and worship, and that you would devote your thoughts to him all throughout the day, that you would pray without ceasing that you might become familiar with the voice of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I pray that even now as we focus on Jesus, the Son of God, that you would cause other voices to be silent. I rebuke every demonic voice in the name of Jesus. 
I rebuke every tormenting spirit in the name of Jesus. I rebuke guilt and shame in the name of Jesus. I rebuke worry and fear in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would ignite a fire in them, that they would be so passionate, that they would be so hungry to know your voice, they would stop at nothing. Give them a hunger for the Word of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We're praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. You're going to get... When you sign up to that emailing list, it's free, by the way. You're going to get a brand new video from me every single week. You're going to get a brand new worship clip from Stephen Moctezuma in that same email. It's weekly. It's free. Make sure you sign up to Spirit Church. Join the Spirit family today. Now over 11,000 members from all around the world. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. And now to your comments. I've been in this series on the Holy Spirit. And these comments come from last week's teaching, The Language of the Holy Spirit, where I taught in depth, guys, details, scriptures, solid biblical truth on the gift of speaking in tongues. And I highly recommend you go back and watch that because if you can operate in the gift of speaking in tongues, that's another key to the voice of the Holy Spirit becoming really, really clear. So I'm going to read these comments. But make sure to check out the other content here. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share the content. That really helps us a lot when you share the content. But leave a comment. Whether, wherever you're watching this from, leave the comment. And maybe next week I'll get to your comment. You never know when I'm going to read yours. Here are the comments from last week's teaching, the language of the Holy Spirit. These are the comments my team selected. Alina Connery writes, this is a really good teaching. God is leading me to his understanding of his language. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, Evangelist David Hernandez and the ministry. May God bless your ministry and grow to save more souls in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glenn Person writes, I'm so glad to be partnering with you, David. Your teachings have helped me tremendously. I often wondered how I could help spread the gospel myself. So God led me here, and now I donate $30 a month. Glad to be partnering with you. Well, Glenn, thank you so much. It's because of your support and the support of believers like you that we are able to continue to spread the gospel through media and events, and we never have to charge for an event, and we never have to charge for a video. So thank you for allowing us to do that. l Official writes, This man is a real man of God. I never thought I would speak in tongues after today. I have been given the gift of tongues. God is real. God bless you. Nana Sarpong writes, This was the best explanation of tongues that I've ever heard. I'm literally sitting here thinking, why aren't I a member of this church yet? And the final commenter writes, The moment I watched this, I learned more about the language of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know about those expressions, and now with this teaching, I have learned it. Also, I love the story about that childlike faith. I love that really. Thank you, Evangelist David. May God continue to bless you, your family, and your ministry. I will always pray for Spirit Church. Continue to be an inspiration to many. I myself consider you as my mentor. Thank you for this ministry and for your obedience to God. Again, God bless. Well, Daniela, God bless you. I'm so very blessed to know that the Holy Spirit is working in your life through this ministry. You know, don't turn off the video, anybody, just yet. I want to talk to you about something. Um, you know, one of my favorite things to do is give gifts to my loved ones. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you found the perfect gift for maybe your friend, maybe your parent, maybe your sibling, uh, maybe your spouse. You find the perfect gift, and maybe it's their birthday or Christmas or whatever the occasion may be, and you're so excited to give them that gift because you can't wait to see their reaction. That, that right there is, is the essence of generosity. It's love. How much more should we desire to give a good gift to Jesus? He's never held back from us. He's given us salvation. He's given us peace of mind. He's given us he, His body on a cross. He shed His blood for us. He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's given us the spiritual gifts, the gift of life, life eternal. He's given to us. 
I want to ask you to give to Him. I want to ask you to give to Jesus through this ministry. When you send finances to this ministry, it's like you're putting a gift in the hands of Jesus Himself. Yes, God blesses those who give. Yes, when you give, it unlocks the door of provision. Yes, when you give, God supplies all your needs. But that's not why we give. We give because when we give toward the work of the gospel, when we give toward winning souls, we're giving to Him His greatest desire, which is souls. For every soul we win to the Lord, we're wiping a tear off His face. So give a good gift to Him. Let your heart overflow with love. Let your generosity rise to a new level and say, Jesus, I want to lavish you with worship. I want to lavish you with the worship of giving. And I want to give a good gift to you. I want to see your face light up. I want to put a smile on your face. Give to Him today through this ministry. I want to challenge you to give a sacrificial gift. Give the best you can give today to help this ministry continue going and growing strong. Sign up today to become my partner for $30 or more a month, and I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. It'll be my gift to you. It'll be my way of saying thank you for supporting the ministry. Our ministry is just getting started, but already we're reaching millions of people through media, thousands of people through events, and we want you to be a part of this. Give a one-time gift today or become a monthly supporter of this ministry. You can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate right now. davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. We accept giving from all around the world. There's PayPal. There's, you can give by card, bank account. There's stock. There's Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We accept all forms of payment. Why? Because we know that the people of God want to lavish the Lord with their gifts. So, I encourage you today, do that right now. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash donate. Don't wait. Maybe you've been putting it off. Maybe you've said, I want to help this ministry. Oh, but next month or next week, look. Just go by faith, become a supporter, and you watch what the Lord will do for you. But do it because you love Him. Do it because you're saying, Lord, thank you for this ministry. Thank you for your word. And help us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit through events and media. Go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.